Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and I spent most of the back end of 2015 being hyped for the subject of this review. SH Fig Arts Bruce Lee fuses Bandai's high-end 6-inch figure design with some of the crazy head sculpt techniques they've been using in their Star Wars Fig Arts releases. A posable 6-inch Bruce Lee is a thing I have wanted for years, and this is SH Fig Arts, and there's no cape involved! So, my expectations were high going in. There are many Bruce Lee ensembles to choose from, and Bandai have gone with the classic and iconic Enter the Dragon shirtless with black pants costume on their first SH Fig Arts outing with this actor likeness. It's a simple set of clothes to pull off, sculpted in a way that plays nice with the figure's articulation, and painted, well, in two tones of black. His socks are white. I'm shrugging. The bigger win is from the waist up. Bruce Lee's slim and muscular physique looks marvelous, with some subtle shading to give his skin a bit of depth. Thing is, I say all this as somebody who's super okay with a sliced up sculpt for the sake of articulation. I know there are many out there who cringe at the sight of things like his various shoulder slits or even his mid-torso joint, but man, aside from a bit of a harsh ridge along the upper areas of his shoulder sockets, I think it all flows really well. And that head just looks freaky! This digital printing technique of Bandai's can be borderline uncanny valley, looking unsettling at times, but impressive at others. I'm ecstatic to see it outside of the Star Wars license, and I think it's really working well here on Bruce Lee's mug. Fig Arts Bruce Lee has, well, ball joints. He's Fig Arts. His creepy head is on a little ball jointed connection, and then the base of his neck's on another ball jointed connection. The top one is a little bit loose and I'll probably tighten that up a little bit with some floor polish. His shoulders have got uh, a joint here, which is mostly for this direction movement, but it has a little bit of rotation as well. Uh, there's an outward shoulder that, uh, I believe, yeah, I can only get it to go out this far, and it kind of stops. So you can't get him to, like, roll his shoulders to be all the way up there. But you can do this. Uh, there's also a dedicated bicep swivel that goes with the sculpt of his uh, musculature. Then he's got a double-jointed elbow. If you just bend the elbow, it does that. That's pretty cool. If you make sure to use this upper joint first, it gets just a bit more curl. I like the uh, the pointy sculpt here, like this little, this little bit here for elbowing dudes in the eyeballs. Uh, I like that that is as pointy as it is. His wrists are ball joints, but because like they're, they're the ball socket's in here, and it's not like a dedicated hinge as well, the wrist motion on him is a bit more limited than I'm used to on Fig Arts. It's still okay, like look, he's got this kind of thing going on, and he can of course rotate stuff, but if you want to use, say, one of his open hands to have him like do a handstand, that's not as possible, unfortunately. Uh, he's got a deep ab joint that can go, well, here's how it works. It's a ball socket joint, I just popped it out. But it can go down to about there, back to about there, there's some six pack going on. Uh, you can use that to turn a little bit, or to tilt around a little bit. Uh, he's also got a waist ball joint, which can do kind of the same thing. So you can combine the two to have him bend down or bend back pretty well. His hips are kind of unique, at least I think they're unique. He's got this uh, rubber PVC diaper to maintain the look of his pants. And on mine, because I had him in an Iron Man pose with this leg like this for like weeks, I think... There's a little dimple on there that I don't know if that was there before, so do be mindful. This is a soft rubber piece, and if you leave him in a super extreme pose that is actually bending it, and you leave him like that for a while, you could um, end up with some dimpling. But uh, his legs are on universal joints. They can go forward and backward. They can go outward. And on this leg, this joint is kind of loose. <laughs> Uh, I need to figure out how to get in there and tighten that up with uh, with some floor polish. The way it works, if we use the thigh swivel, you can see that there is like a pin joint basically. So there's a there's a joint pinned into his groin, and then there's a separate pin joint for outward motion. So I just have to get some floor polish flowing down into there. Um, this disc on the inside is sculpted with a little bit of a a wrinkle, so it works as cloth when it's visible, but. You also have to ignore this gigantic hole. Uh, but yeah, the thigh swivel works. Uh, he can kick pretty high, thanks in part to the rubber diaper. Like, I feel satisfied with this level of high kick. There is a knee joint, which has a somewhat double-jointed range. It's uh, just a single disc joint, as you can see back here where the sculpt kind of cuts for the sake of its movement. I think it looks real good. Um, and the like being able to bend back this far 
This is about what I'm looking for. It would have been cool for it to curl up all the way as tightly as his elbow joint, but uh, for having baggy pants, I think that this makes for a decent look in most any posture, especially with the thigh swivel up there. His uh, ankles are just ball sockets, and I'm going to see if I can make it clear that the cut happens within the sock, but it also lines up with the back of the shoe. It's very smooth, and I think there's a really good amount of range on this deal. And then the toe joint can toe, so that he can, you know, reach for things. His posability is great. Uh, it, it's just that there are two spots that were a bit disappointing. The neck is a bit loose, and this is a bit loose. If I can tighten those up, then this guy is doing just about everything I wanted. The only other, the only thing I would call missing is a hinge on the wrist. But given his shirtless sculpt, I'm kind of okay with it. Um, but I, I've had a ton of fun posing this guy, especially with his alternate hands and faces. First up among Bruce Lee's accessories are his swappable face sculpts. They're very easy to pop on and off of his main cranial structure, much easier than some full-on head swaps have been. And they all benefit from that digital printing stuff just as well as his basic neutral expression. There are two woo faces, one looking forward while the other's always glancing to his right. And then there's the what face, which is hilarious. Like, it looks awesome, but since it's on an action figure, it very quickly becomes ridiculous, and I love it. Moving on to hand swaps, Bruce Lee opens up with fists because, come on, these pop off of small pegs which are thinner than the usual fig arts deal and hopefully not fragile in the long run. Bruce Lee then has open chopping hands which also function decently for bring it poses or even calm open hand poses if you ignore the curled thumbs. Next up are some open and splayed hands which fulfill a wide range of emotions. The fourth pair of hands are a little more specific, yet still work for just about anything, as they're primarily there for Bruce Lee's classic hoppin' I'm gonna murder you fighting stance. There's also a solo right hand that's all thumbs up ready, built for an intimidating pre-fight wiping of one's nose, or given a real ecstatic affirmation. Finally, there are a pair of gripping hands, and what can they grip? A bunch of stuff. There's a pair of nunchaku with an actual metal chain link whose small size is pointed out with a fragility warning in the instruction book. And while it's possible to tuck one of the handles under Bruce Lee's arm, it's not very easy to set up or solid once the pose is in place because there's no give on his pecs or his torso. It's all hard plastic. And if there's one thing I've learned over the last few years, it's that gravity will make posing an action figure with working nunchaku kind of annoying if both handles aren't being held. There's also a long bow staff for proper Donatello or pole vaulting action. And then there are a smaller pair of sticks for when Bruce Lee just wants to beat the ever-loving burger meat out of some fool's face to serve up some raw justice pie. All three weapon options are basically just variations on black sticks, but oh what black sticks they are! And oh, what a small plastic Bruce Lee this is. Were I one to make bold statements in the first quarter of a year, I'd say that this is probably the best Bruce Lee action figure I have ever seen. He's at a six inch scale, the face sculpts are magnificent, and the articulation is superb. Total package kind of stuff. Close to it at least, if it weren't for some of those flexible joints also being looser than I'd have liked. The figure actually only clocks in at about five and a quarter inches, but Bruce Lee wasn't a tall fellow. On toys that fudge the six inch scale to be a little larger, like Marvel Legends, he does end up looking a tad too short by comparison. But whatever man, he can still beat them all up. This is easily one of the best figures I've gotten all year, and I doubt another Bruce Lee toy will satisfy me as hard as this one did. If you're someone who could do with a posable Jeet Kune Do master in your life, you absolutely must track this piece down. I had months of hype leading up to its release, and the payoff was a big damn just to the left of a bullseye. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I hope to hell that there are more Fig Arts Bruce Lees in our future. A scarred and bloody Final Battle variant of this guy. A yellow tracksuit Game of Death version. Bruce Lee Sentai Wata Ranger! Let's live that dream!